All right, uh, we're here, the Huge Movie Fanatics, here to do another holiday-themed movie. This time it's a holiday-themed slam-bang action movie uh, from, I don't know, 87 or something 87. like that, yeah. called by the name of Lethal Weapon. Weapon. Uh, this was one of uh, the up-and-coming, uh, you know, uh, great producer, what's his name? Joel Silver's yeah. movie. I can't... Richard this Donner was, directed Yeah, when, which, of course, Richard Donner directed. And this was, you know, I mean, he had just... I don't know if this was before or after Predator, but this is like the same year. So I mean, you know, Joel Silver was just like, you know, like just hitting him on the head like every time. It was and, the same year as Predator. Yeah, yeah that's what I said. Yeah. I don't know if it was before. It came out before or yeah. after, but I mean, he's just like, whoa, he's really becoming a huge, a huge player, and uh, it's just like bam, bam, bam. And I, I watched Shane Black, of course. I don't know if he wrote. It, it was, he wrote it. Yeah. He wrote this whole movie. I don't know if he wrote. He had, I don't think he. I think he had like parts to do with Predator as far as lines or something. Yeah, like I think that. additional dialogue. Yeah, something like that. And they just put him in there to, uh, I don't know what. Don't yeah, know he was an actor. He was just. Well, yeah. I mean, he was pretty. He was pretty good. Um, but Shane Black wrote it, and uh, I actually just watched it last night because I, I knew we were going to do this, and I hadn't seen it for a while. And I'm going to go three stars. Um, <laughs> it's uh, which he probably doesn't agree with, which is absolutely fine. It's it's a it's a movie um, that perfectly represents you know the era like the late '80s and stuff like that and, and uh, what's his name I'm not a huge one of the reasons my stars is I'm not a huge Mel Gibson fan I've never been and I, I the character is understand I think the character is right for the character but his nuttiness kind of bugs me a little bit like you know and I guess that's just because that's not what I am like as a person so but I understand how people are that way and I understand how it works for that character um, I think the the biggest strength, I think, of the movie is just the, the the those two characters and the way they interact. I mean, those two characters instantly, like the week it came out, I mean, it just instantly became like iconic of some of the biggest cop movie pairings oh, yeah. of, of all time, you know. And uh, so, so yeah. Why don't you? I'm I'm just drawing blank. Continue. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm going to give this one four stars. If I oh, were to. Oh. If I were to put a list of the 10 best 80s movies, this would definitely be on that list. Like, I just think this is such a, a masterpiece. It was, um, huh. the action is just extraordinary. I really, really like the, the, shoot, uh, the shootouts. Uh, they're relatively believable, uh, but uh, smart at the same time. I, I mean, the, the one complaint I would have is the... The fist fight at the end of the movie. Oh, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't like that crap. That that was a bit like much, much but but it, it's the Jaws principle. You have them for two hours. You can do whatever you want in the last five minutes, and that's what Joe uh, or Joel Silver wanted to do. That's what Richard Donner wanted to do. So well, I know a lot of let's just guys have the fist fight. In the world eat that crap up. Yeah, the like UFC fans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean like... that was a bit ridiculous, but you know what? That's one complaint out of a two-hour and ten-minute movie. So what? Like. Yeah, that is such a good movie. The characters are just so damn perfect. Like uh, Danny Glover was so great, and Mel Gibson. Like who thought that that pairing would be really strong? And Mel Gibson like eclipsed any performance he had before that. Uh, like he was famous for Mad Max and uh, oh, that, for, those performances were just almost well. I mean, like he, like he he and then he was in uh, a few other like movies. Uh, yeah. Before that, but like this one, like really cemented his uh, stardom, and he is so good as that character. It's a little disheartening to know that he probably wasn't so much of a performance as we thought back then. Uh. But you know what? He was great <laughs> as being a crazy ass person. Uh, I mean, uh, like I I disagree uh, with you. Like I think what makes the movie work is his craziness, his nuttiness. You look at the insanity in his eyes. And oh, I'm, his, not, I'm not saying it doesn't like, make the movie work. I'm saying no, I, I mean, don't like it. Yeah, no. Like I mean, like that's <laughs> that's what really like sold it on me. Like his uh, his uh, nuttiness when he was like, uh, shoot me. And he yeah, was, yeah. Like the insanity that is in those eyes. But he's also like a decent guy in it. Like he he know he he has like. A drive to do the right thing at the end of the day, and um, uh, he's the lethal weapon. But yeah, uh, I thought the villains were pretty good. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's so many of them same things <laughs> yeah. in the early or in the '80s, like yeah. the whole '80s, like the the bad guy, you know. But I, I do like Gary Busey as what's his, Mr. Cri 
Mr. Joshua. Yeah. I just watched it last night. I can't remember. Mr. Joshua. Well, I thought he was I don't great. think they really say his name up until the very end, but you just hear well, about Joshua. No, I think they say pretty much in the, in the beginning, because I, I remember thinking, what's his name? So I think it's the middle or something. Um, the... Uh, I, th I think the screenplay is just really tight. It is funny. It's very, very oh, funny. Um, and like one of the best scenes is when um, uh, Danny Glover showing off and uh, at the shooting oh, range gosh, and he shoots pitch perfect uh, hole in the uh, thing and then Gibson puts it all the way back and shoots six more bullets and when they bring it back up, it's one of the best jokes in the movie. Um, and as I say, action great. The Christmas, it takes place during Christmas. The Christmassy atmosphere is kind of oh, there, kind of not. I mean, I mean, the opening credits have like an old classic. Yeah, song. and like they they do. And there's a Christmas tree that gets destroyed and demolished at the end of the movie. Um, like one, I mean, there's little hints of Christmas. Like it's Christmas. Yeah. One movie. one thing that I when I was a kid I didn't know Christmas existed without snow. You know, when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. One thing that I think *Lethal Weapon* was the first movie I ever saw where you know they had like. Uh, Christmas ornaments and just was just like looked like summertime. Yeah, it's like Burbank, was, <laughs> California. I was a little bit put off, a little bit put off, understandably, but uh, but I guess you know they can have Christmas too. Yeah, I mean it, it's such a smart movie. Yeah, like I I am a fan. That's a great movie. I give it easy four stars. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the sequels were varying degrees of good, but never were able to even come close to matching that first movie. So. For the record, I'd like two more. Really? Yeah, and I, I haven't. I seen. I seen it like two years ago, and I'm gonna probably watch it again now after seeing the first one. But I remember after I, cause me and my dad, we did all, all four of them, cause I got the like the ten dollar DVD collection. I had all four of them. That was all, that's awesome. So, and I remember really liking two after. It's a bit Empire Strikes Back, where it's like uh, yeah. the villain of the second one. No. He had involvement and made everything that happened in the first one kind of happen. Oh, yeah, I don't remember. I, so, see it again. I mean, that that bugs me. That's a little. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I do want to say before we close on, on *Lethal Weapon* is it has a very good anti-suicide message. Yeah, totally. Which the the movie begins, uh, or the the first I don't know twenty minutes or thirty minutes. The movie has Mel Gibson being definitely obviously in a state where he's probably been for a while years where he's just like teeter-tottering every maybe he does it every I think he says he does it every yeah every, every day and every day or he's holding the bullet every day yeah and uh, we see him almost 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 blow his back of his uh, That's neck out one of the best scenes in the movie if not the best oh scene. yeah I mean, it's, a, it's a great it's a great scene and I, I think that it's a it's it, it is I don't know I mean there if it is a great anti-suicide message because what ends up happening is meeting uh, this new partner, what's his name? Mur Murtaugh? Murtaugh. <laughs> uh, in meeting him, he kind of becomes, in a way, at the end of the movie, part of his, his family. Yeah. Which um, brings some uh, reason and purpose into his life that wasn't there before. So what it basically says as an anti-suicide message, I don't know if they put it there or not, but it's there, which is maybe you shouldn't do it because you never know the next day or the next week could be the start of, of a reason to, to stay around. So yeah. I thought that that, when I watched it yesterday, I thought that that was very oh, strong yeah. in that aspect. And uh, I just wanted to add that. Oh yeah, totally. But, but, the, but the action, although it compared to you know, what has been done since, yeah. is very, like there's a shootout that lasts like a minute. It's very kind of, it's very intense when it happens, but it doesn't last very long, yeah. which I guess isn't really fair to compare it to movies that were made after because you're always <laughs> going to do something bigger after. But I'm just saying, in retrospect, it's kind of like, you know, the movie is dated. But yeah, uh, I hate you know I gotta I gotta I hate I think that I think the saxophone is is, is actually oh, perfect. I hate sax. I hate saxophones. Yeah. I think it's perfect for Murtaugh's character, I mean, but I I, I freaking hate saxophones. I think, I don't know when they were invented, <laughs> but they should uninvent them because right, yeah. it's just like... They make I me always, physically angry. I don't oh, know I get, I get pretty angry too. And they always remind me of like, like New York at night, like Saturday Night Live, you know, you know, and it's just like, shut up, <laughs> you know. So I, I wanted to comment on that. Last night I was watching, I was like, yeah. just like you, when the, when yeah. the, whenever we're talk came in, it's like, nah, 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 nah. I just like, shut up, mother. <laughs> yeah, so saxophones and, and bagpipes just... Oh, I like bagpipes. Bagpipes suck, and saxophones suck, and that's just my opinion, that's not the opinion.
But I, I don't. It's so, so I was watching it last night, and it's like, nah, and that's, they do some of the most like heinous saxophone shit in here. They basically do it knowing that there's people who hate them out there, and it's just like, nah, 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 nah. just to kind of do the yeah. It's uh, like, well, yeah, I, score for I all think, four. Well, yeah, I think, and so. it's like. Well, the guy who did such an Michael choice. Kamen or whatever, who who did the music for this and like Die Hard, yeah. some of the Di- or maybe all of the Die Hards, um, and I guess I'm not I don't know, but I think that Eric Clapton wasn't yeah, involved I th- in Michael I think Weapon music. He, too. he scored it, but uh, yeah, I just want to comment on the saxophone. I just it just kind of bugs me. Yeah. No. So Merry so, Christmas. So Merry <laughs> Christmas. Yeah, there you go. That's that's what I hate this Christmas. <laughs> So I guess I guess that's about it. The the you know the what I was getting at before is the the shootouts are very cool and very realistic yeah. and even even compared to now, nowadays standards they are short but when what when they, when they happen they're still very very forceful like yeah you know so you know the, the minute long shootouts are very are still how, very cool. How badass was it when like uh, Mel Gibson just takes running in his little sneakers down the street with <laughs> with the guns and I was oh, like yeah. man he is a pimp. Like that well, was just yeah, really I mean, this cool. was like so this was like the most badass movie of of that year. Yeah, but, well, sure. I have to compare it to obviously Predator, you know, and so but Joel Silver, like I say, was just at the forefront. Yeah, like, of it. What a year! Just yeah. like, oh my gosh, you know. Anyway, off track. But then, uh, you, just when you thought that was good, next year came what? Yeah. Die Hard, which we'll review next. Yes. Check out Die Hard review at the Huge Movie Fanatics. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to put that in there. You should put that in there.